Hi, I wanted to show you how I terminate Ethernet patch cables by putting on the RJ45 connectors on the CAT6 or CAT5 cables. I've been doing this for a long time and found a pretty easy way of doing it, so I figured I'd share. Uh, most crimpers have the uh, cable cutter and the cable stripper. And you can use these, but you have to be very careful. Uh, looking at the stripper, you can see that the distance between the blades is, uh, is very minimal. And if you were to just chomp right down on the cable, you're going to end up uh, cutting through some of the actual conductors inside the Ethernet cable. So what I do is make sure if I've been pulling this or, or whatever, if I've installed it in the house or something, I make sure I get a nice clean end to work with. And you know, just cut the end off there. Like that. And then what I do is I just I put the uh, cable in to the, uh, the stripper portion. I go out about two or three inches and I very lightly chomp down, very lightly. It's just enough that it scores the outer shielding, but it doesn't go through and cut the individual conductors inside. So once I've done that, I hit the camera. <laughs> I pry the, the outer conductor off and as you can see, I didn't cut into any of the internal uh, wires. So then what I do is I'll pull out this uh, stripper string here. I don't really like using that just because it'll end up uh, leaving a weird uh, oddball end here unless you're really careful about cutting that. So I just do it the way I showed you. Uh, the next is lining up the wires. And for this, it's going to be a straight through connection. And so I'm following the T658 Bravo on both ends. So what I'll do is uh, unwind the wires and start lining them up in the correct pattern, which would be white with orange and then orange. And as I do that, I unwind them and I kind of wiggle them around to make sure they're nice and flat and they're not wobbly or sitting funny on each other. The next is white with green. followed by blue, then white with blue. Now we can bring our green back over. And as I'm doing this, I'm holding them down flat with this one hand, and I'm making sure that they're, they're nice and flat sitting next to each other. And when I unwind them, I unwind them all the way up to where the shielding here stops. Okay, and then finally, the white with brown and then brown. And I'm not too worried about the end over here because I'm cutting that off. But once I have them laying pretty flat and it doesn't look like they're going to do anything crazy, I trim at about this distance here, as you can see. Make sure it's a nice flat cut across all the wires. Don't go at an angle or anything like that. Make sure they're flat all the way across and it's about this distance, it's about three quarters of an inch. Then take my RJ45 connector. You can see there's a side with the tab and then there's a side where the conductors are showing. It's this side up the conductor side up and you slide that in and when you do that you slide it in and make sure that they are going into their individual uh, openings and that you don't have them crossing over and you can visually inspect to make sure that your pinout is still correct assuming it is you then push all the way in and the goal is to it's two things you're going to want the actual individual conductors to be pushed all the way to the very front of the, uh, the RJ45 jack. As you can see where the uh, conductor will get crimped and pushed into the shielding of each wire. And you're also wanting to make sure that this outer shielding is pushed up as far as it can go because there's a little plastic triangular tab thing. When you crimp, that'll crimp against that and that holds your shielding 
tight. So if somebody were to pull on the cable or something like that, it doesn't pull on the wires, it pulls on that shielding. So that helps protect your connector. So once you've got, a, got them all seated, you then slide it in your crimper all the way and give it a nice good crimp. And you'll see that it's pushed down on all these little conductors and that the shielding has been pinched in there by that triangular tab. And what I'll do is, for demonstration purposes, I'll do the other side. I'll make a short, shorty little patch cable here. I'll do the same thing, but I won't describe it. I'll just do it. straight through. The pinout is the same on both ends. Now I made a patch cable. In theory, I pinned it out properly and this is going to work. I always recommend if you have one or if you can borrow one, is a network cable tester. This is really good for all sorts of troubleshooting and testing, but uh, for just basic pin out checking and cable checking, it's, it's wonderful. So with this, it has a connector on this piece here, which is the actual brain, and then it's got a loopback connector, which all it does plug in there. I plug this in here. And I'm going to step through the menu. Hopefully you can see it. Right now I have it on cable test. Enter. Wire map. Enter. And it's going to check to see if it's a straight through. And it, this here shows it's flashing path, meaning it's all the way through. So I have a good patch cable here. I'll save this for testing. In fact, this might not be a bad little cable to keep with my test set. So I can test jacks that I pin up. So, there you go.